Ooh, this is a good <laughs> song. That takes me back to the 80s. Oh, yeah. Higher love. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Hey, thanks for waking up with us on this Wednesday. I'm Eric Connors. And I'm Betty Romper. All the 80s styles are coming back. The music is never going to get old. Right? Yes, <laughs> and I know not everyone follows all of our social media pages, but I want to give a big congratulations to you, Netta, my Why? new co-anchor. Oh, oh. <laughs> And, like, uh, <laughs> and Evan Narani, our new uh -huh. weather anchor. This is your morning team. Yes. That's right. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's an honor. It's amazing to be right next to you, Eric, and with you, Evan. So uh, we're happy to make it official. Agreed. So, yeah. it's, I mean, <laughs> we feel very lucky to be here every morning. I mean, I, we know uh, how mornings can sometimes be a busy time for a lot of people as they start off the day. So we're happy to be a part of your mornings, and uh, we feel very grateful to be invited into your guys' homes. And excited to be here with you two, Netta and Eric. Uh, we start off the day with a clearing trend. So although yesterday brought us those light showers and some cloud cover, we're moving toward partly cloudy and mostly sunny skies. Temperatures are going to be slow to warm up today, but we have a nice intense warm up into tomorrow. 10 degree of uh, a difference between today and tomorrow afternoon as far as those highs go. Right now, satellite radar shows those clouds along the coastline and through your inland valleys. I want to take you to one crash that we're talking about just around the uh, Miramar area. This is on the 15 uh, southbound Carroll Canyon Road exit. Looks like there was a car that was uh, tipped over on its side. So they have the number four lane and the right hand shoulder blocked. One to three lanes are open currently, and it looks like because volume is still very light on the 15 southbound, you should be good to go for that morning commute beyond that. Eric Netta, back to you. Evan, thank you so much. And today marks the official launch of a new effort to get more COVID tests out to all Americans. That's right. You can now order free at home rapid kits through a new website from the federal government. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol live in Chula Vista now with everything we need to know here. And this is already rolled out, right? Yeah, that's absolutely right, Eric. So yesterday was the soft launch, but today is officially the start of the program. I know many people jumped on the opportunity yesterday, but did experience some glitches because 500,000 people accessed this website trying to get those at home free COVID tests. So here's how it works. I'm going to break it down for you. Every single household can order four test kits per household or address, which should ship in seven to 12 days, and it's all free. Now, ordering free COVID tests have been made simple. Um, you go to covidtest.gov, click on the blue order free at home test. Then you're redirected to a U.S. Postal Service page where you fill in your name, your email and address. Click check out. You won't have to pay anything and then hopefully you receive a confirmation. Now this is where some San Diego residents have run into some issues. Some applicants were at least initially denied their tests because the U.S. Postal Service could not recognize their address, especially if they lived in an apartment building or other multi unit dwellings with the same street address, but just a different unit number. So Janet Beach, she lives on a boat off of Shelter Island. She got her test, no problem. But then she tried to help her neighbor order one, and it just didn't work. And did the same thing, different slip number, and it didn't work. And it said that someone at that address had already ordered tests. Now, in response to the U.S. Postal Service, they said this is only happening with a small percentage of orders and that the White House assured there are enough tests for all households. Now, if you can't access it online or need help over the phone, the White House did say that they are releasing a phone number, a helpline for those people. But if you can and want the link to this free at home testing kit, you can find that on CBS8.com. I'm Dana Marie McNichol live in Chula Vista for CBS8. Well, today, President Biden is expected to announce a plan to distribute hundreds of millions of free, high-quality masks through pharmacies and community sites. The masks will be N95s coming from the Strategic National Stockpile. It will be the largest distribution of PPE in American history. Shipments are expected to start at the end of this week. Turning now to the legal battle for custody of missing mother Maya Miliete's children. That's back in the spotlight today. In fact, a hearing is scheduled as Maya's sister, Mara Chris, seeks guardianship for the kids. Right now, her family only has court-ordered visits. The kids are currently staying with the parents of Maya's husband, Larry. Larry's in jail, charged with Maya's murder. Maya's body has not been found, and she has been missing for over a year now. 
Cleanup efforts continue this morning as sanitation workers in parts of San Diego and Chula Vista return to work now for the second day. Chula Vista city crews are still being dispatched to help remove that trash that's been piling up over the past month. Quite a mess they have to deal with. Officials in Chula Vista want the company Republic Services to offer a full month's refund for anybody affected by that strike. Well, you may have noticed some changes to one of your bills. SDG&E raised its rates recently. Yeah, shocking a lot of people, frustrating yeah. for as many. Uh, some CBS 8 viewers tell us the numbers just don't add up. It doesn't make sense. Why so high? Our Chris Grow joining us live outside of SDG&E headquarters to explain what's happening. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. There certainly is a buzz about this on social media. And after a number of inquiries, CBS 8 decided maybe try to shed a light on this, try to figure out exactly what may be going on. And here's some of the stories that we heard. Take a listen. If it's going to be this much going forward, then I definitely have to, uh, you know, be wary about that. And that was Rudy Lopez, who has a two bedroom apartment in Otay Mesa. He told us that he used to pay between 45 and $60 a month, but this last one, his SDG&E bill nearly tripled. And we heard a similar story from a woman who lives in PB with her son, as well as other social media chatter. Now, after seeing this, CBS 8 jumped in to get answers, and it turns out that back in December, the utility company did notify its customers that rates would be going up on January 1st, the start of the new year. They, uh, SDG&E, that is, cited a number of reasons for the hike that include wildfire mitigation, the growth of public benefit programs uh, that gives bill discounts to low-income families, as well as the higher cost of natural gas, something that we have seen at the pump, which led to a rise in prices there as well. Now, on average, SDG&E customers are paying 7.8% more for electricity and 24.6% more for gas. And, of course, during the winter months, you're going to see that go up as well, too, in terms of usage, not necessarily the percentage, but the usage will go up during the winter months as more people turn to heat. However, a lot of the customers, after we explain that to them, say that that just doesn't add up, that that is not what they see going on. Now, we tried to bring that back to SCG&E. They declined an on-camera interview, but in a phone conversation, they did tell us that they recommend that those customers in particular go onto their account. And remember, if this is you at home, this is something for you to do, too, to make sure that you're on the right rate plan, to make sure that you are on the plan that matches your lifestyle, your home, and also what it is that your budget is. And for more on what SDG&E had to say, you can go to our website, cbs8.com, and click on that story link. Eric and Netta. I mean, my husband and wife, uh, my husband and I have literally gotten into a fight over this. He's like, stop turning the heater up so high. And, and that wasn't me, I promise. Uh, so, yeah, there's more to come out of that one. Uh, AT&T and Verizon rolling out high speed 5G service nationwide today, except near airports. This comes after airlines raised concerns about possible frequency interference for planes trying to land. San Diego International Airport says they'll continue to monitor this locally. And even though the 5G rollout is delayed near airports, some international airlines still canceled flights to the U.S. because of the uncertainty. Three big developing stories out of Washington to uh, tell you about here this morning. The lawmakers investigating the January 6th Capitol attack have subpoenaed Rudy Giuliani and other members of former President Trump's legal team. Giuliani was a central figure in Trump's attempt to overturn the 2020 election on the basis of unfounded allegations of voter fraud. And this morning, the Senate is headed for a showdown on voting rights. Democrats are struggling to pass legislation. They need all Democrats on board to change Senate rules that would allow lawmakers to pass the bills with just a simple majority. A procedural vote is expected here today, but Republicans are expected to block it from getting the required 60 votes in the evenly divided Senate. And today, President Biden will be holding his first news conference of 2022. This comes on the eve of his first full year in office. The president will likely face questions on record inflation, his response to the COVID-19 surge, and questions on the opposition from some in his own party on his legislative agenda. CBS News will carry a special report at 1 p.m. You can also watch it at cbs8.com. Let's turn it over to Evan now for a check on our forecast on this Wednesday. All righty. Yeah, boy, it is uh, warming up nicely. We have temperatures making their way well into the 60s today. Today, slightly below average in some spots on the county map. Other spots are going to be right around average, but tomorrow we gain about 10 degrees. Those forecast highs are going to be well into the 70s pretty much across the board. So here's today, mid 60s. You've got cloud cover as we start off the morning. That'll break apart as we go through the rest of the day. The expectation is that past noon we will have a lot more sunshine than cloud 
cloud cover in the forecast. The thing is, those temperatures are going to be slow to warm up. So again, today we stick with those mid 60s and then 70s come into play with those Santa Ana winds picking up as we go into tomorrow. All this thanks to the ridge of high pressure that is building around us. Ridge of high pressure means that that air aloft is high in pressure. In turn, it sinks closer to the ground, and because of that, it prevents those clouds from lifting and condensing. So we see a lot more sunshine than cloud cover. Uh, low pressure system moves off to the east of us. That ridge stays in place, really just stagnant for the most part as we go into the rest of the week and early next week, and that's what's contributing to a lack of really any significant change in the forecast as we go toward uh, the remainder of the week. So sits over here, low pressure system tries to make its way in, really doesn't have much uh, oomph to it. So in turn, we just uh, continue with that stagnant air. Now looking at what we have as far as your current temperatures as you're walking out the door, 50 is pretty much across the board. 55 for Oceanside, 58 for San Diego, 57 for El Cajon. Again, these temperatures warming well into the 60s as we head toward your afternoon. We'll have more details on what to expect into the remainder of the week, including that ridge and how it's going to be bringing those widespread 70s. We'll also be jumping into a little bit more detail into those Santa Ana winds that'll pick up even just tonight 